Tonight on Connecticut's news station, shutdown averted. We'll tell you about the deal in D.C. to keep the federal government open and why a Democrat from New York is under investigation for pulling a fire alarm inside the Capitol. Plus, a community comes together for a rally today in Bridgeport to support a woman at the center of controversy in that city's ballot battle. And we are live tonight as Connecticut dries out for fall festivals. Take a bite of the apple with us at the Southington Apple Harvest Fair. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carmen Chow. We begin on the weather watch tonight after it poured all day yesterday. The rain finally came to an end today. But take a look at the Farmington River from earlier today in Burlington where all that rain created those strong waves you see there. Let's check in with meteorologist Ryan Breton. Ryan, I think we're all hoping for consistent dry weather in the coming days. And we finally have that, Carmen. And as you saw there, the rivers really need it. They are all swollen, many of them out of their banks. We have a number of river flood warnings, including for the Farmington River. And here are some of the rivers we're watching right now. The Still River in Brookfield still in moderate flood. The Housatonic at Stevenson Dam on the way down. But last night it was in moderate flood and the Farmington River in the Simsbury area is actually still on the way up. It will be cresting late tonight or tomorrow morning. As you can see, the rain fortunately has ended. Maybe a sprinkle in southeast Connecticut, but you can see the swirl offshore storm system developing and now finally pulling away. And as we go back to the west, there's actually plenty of dry weather, and this is ours for the next several days. So we have a great forecast ahead tomorrow with the clear sky building in and still a little bit of moisture in the low levels. We may have some fog forming in the valley. So just be aware, especially in the Connecticut Valley around six or seven in the morning, there may be some fog to start out the day. Otherwise, it turns into a beauty. We have sunshine, Warming temperatures will start the morning in the low 50s and end the day in the mid to upper 70s. It's going to be a really nice day tomorrow. And there is more where that came from. Sunshine for Monday with high temperatures in the low uh, mid to upper 70s. We could hit the 80s on Tuesday. Much more on the warmth and sunshine ahead. Ryan, thank you. A sigh of relief this Saturday night for millions of federal workers and troops who will be getting paid next week. The House of Representatives approved a stopgap bill to fund the federal government for 45 more days, averting a government shutdown. But the vote followed a dramatic moment on Capitol Hill when Congressman Jamal Bowman allegedly pulled a fire alarm inside the Capitol building. The New York Democrat is now under investigation and House Republicans are comparing his actions to the riots on January 6th, 2021. Fox's Chad Pergram is in Washington with our lead story tonight. A government shutdown averted. A coalition of Democrats and Republicans in both the House and Senate voting to avoid a shutdown. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy leaned on Democrats to get this done. I'm sure every bet you had was government was gonna shut down. I don't know how many times you're gonna count us out. But if there's one thing you should start understanding, not just that I'll never give up, but I'm a type of conservative that wants to get things done. After the House passed the bill, the pressure turned to the Senate. Democrats and Republicans have come to an agreement and the government will remain open. Bipartisanship, which has been the trademark of the Senate, has prevailed and the American people can breathe a sigh of relief. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy worked with Democrats. Uh, they worked with Democrats uh, to get this bill passed. People here who follow the Congress thought that that was always going to be the avenue that they were going to go along. Uh, Kevin McCarthy could never get uh, all Republicans to kind of caramelize around a GOP only bill. And the route to funding the government to preventing a shutdown was working with Democrats. Well, Matt Gates. The Republican from Florida has consistently said uh, that he might drop this uh, sort of Damocles on the House Speaker uh, if he was to work with Democrats here, and he would call for a motion to vacate the chair. This would be to demand a new Speaker election in the middle of the Congress. We haven't had one of those since 1910. We are at this point because Kevin McCarthy made multiple contradictory promises about the budget top line to different groups of people. He made one promise to House conservatives in January to secure the position. He 
made another promise to President Biden. He made a third promise altogether to House appropriators. So it, Kevin's deal was if he made multiple contradictory promises and delayed as long as possible, he could push people up against shutdown politics in order to avoid the, the programmatic level review that House conservatives have called for. It's unclear if Gates will attempt his gambit in the coming days, but no government shutdown at least for six weeks. On Capitol Hill, Chad Pergram, Fox News. New tonight, four people in Meriden can't sleep in their own home tonight after a fire this morning. This happened on James Street just after 7 a.m. The fire started on the second floor, and with the help of three neighboring fire departments, firefighters got the blaze under control within 90 minutes. Fire officials say one firefighter was injured tackling the flames, but thankfully those injuries are not life-threatening. He was treated at Mid-State Medical Center and sent home. The Meriden Fire Marshal's Office is in investigating. A house in Norwich had to be evacuated last night after a huge oil spill in its basement. The people living on Boswell Avenue called for help when they smelled gas. Crews found more than 100 gallons a foot of oil covering the basement floor. We're told it leaked from an abandoned tank. An emergency cleanup crew was called to immediately remove all that oil. The property is set to be re-evaluated on Monday. Tonight, supporters of the woman at the center of the absentee ballot controversy in Bridgeport are speaking out. They held a rally today as Connecticut election officials investigate possible fraud in the mayoral primary. Fox 61's Angela Bavara was there. Wanda Geter Pataki making headlines after the release of this video by the John Gomes campaign days after he lost the Bridgeport Democratic primary to incumbent mayor Joe Gannam. Gomes alleges the surveillance video shows Geter Pataki, a city employee, making multiple trips to drop papers into an absentee ballot drop box. We don't know chain of custody of this video. We don't know anything about this. So we, we ask people to, to don't rush the judgment. We just feel like that she has been uh, treated different than anyone else. I want to know who stole that tape. On Saturday, about two dozen supporters of Geter Pataki defended her name at a rally outside the government center. The public supporter of Mayor Ganem is currently on paid administrative leave. I'm not the judge or the jury. The SEC is handling it. It's an investigation. Let them do their job. So as a black female, we as an African-American community want to stand with her to let her know whatever it is, we still there with her. I was spoken to. As supporters of Geter Pataki spoke up, so did neighbors concerned with what they saw on video. The voice of the residents of the city of Bridgeport, their civil rights, their rights to vote was violated. A lawsuit by Gomes accuses the Ganem campaign of the illegal depositing of absentee ballots, distribution of ballot applications, and completion of ballots. It's on camera. Hi, it's Wanda Home. This is Angelo from Fox 61. We visited Geter Pataki's home looking for answers. Wanda is not home. She has no comment to make. In a statement last week, Mayor Joe Ganem said he did not condone in any way actions taken by anyone, including any campaign, city, or elected officials, which undermines the integrity of either the electoral process or city property. That lawsuit by Gomes is also seeking to have the primary redone or him declared the winner of the primary. And there is a sense of urgency with that lawsuit as well as the state investigation into possible fraud as the November 7th general election inches closer. Reporting in Bridgeport, I'm Angelo Bavara, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Angelo, thank you for that update. Now to the Elm City, where the New Haven Police Department responded to a domestic violence incident this morning where someone was barricaded inside a home. That person was eventually arrested. This happened on Howard and First Avenues, and police say only that one person was inside the home at the time. Everyone in the surrounding areas were asked to stay inside and away from the scene when this first happened. If you or someone you know is in crisis in a domestic violence situation, there are resources in addition to 911. Safe Connect offers confidential, safe, and free services to anyone dealing with domestic violence 24 7 every day of the year. Call or text 888 77 42900, and you can also visit ctsafeconnect.org.
Police in Middletown are asking for your help identifying a man suspected of a number of robberies across the city. They posted this picture on Facebook. Police say this man is suspected of pulling many robberies and larcenies within the past week, including two last night. If you have information on his identity or his whereabouts, give Middletown police a call. What a difference 24 hours makes right at this time last night. Fox 61 told you that all the rain we've had postponed the opening of one of Connecticut's favorite fall festivals. But today the crowds were in Southington and enjoying every bite of the apple harvest fair. Fox 61's Jake Garcia is live from Southington with more on the festival. Jake. Well, Carmen, as you just mentioned, the rains that we saw earlier today not putting a stop to the festival here in Southington. Uh, tonight's activity is wrapping up just about 30 minutes ago. Uh, now, the rain actually caused the push, as you mentioned earlier, of the start of the festival from last night until this afternoon. Right on time, the rain stopped and uh, the crowds came out, which is fantastic. People came out to enjoy the fall weather after days of off and on rain. It literally flooded everywhere. So it's nice to be able to like get outside on such a nice day. A rainy summer also putting a strain on apple harvest across the state this year, but that didn't stop crowds from flooding town green to enjoy all things apples. Apple fritters, yeah, apple fritters, apple fritters and ice cream. You got to get the apple fritters. They're so good. Sometimes the line's a little long, but it's worth the wait. Crowds also enjoying live music and local vendors. We have um, over 70, close to 80 vendors, um, all different types of food. Uh, can suit anybody's needs. You'll find something you definitely enjoy. And the fun continues tomorrow with the YMCA road race and an annual festival parade at 2 p.m. Sunday afternoon. That's a big draw. We're, we're hoping for large crowds, which I'm sure we're going to have, but we're looking forward to it. And after a day of fun, the night ended with a fireworks display. Great entertainment. We have a great carnival, so there's a lot for everybody, so hopefully the folks can make it. The festival is free and open to the public. Now, uh, if you missed it this weekend, there will continue on uh, tomorrow, actually. And if you missed this weekend's uh, festival, you have a chance to uh, attend next week, Friday through Sunday. Live in Southington, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Like a good time, Jake. Thank you. Despite lingering rain this morning, New Britain B Stadium was buzzing with excitement. Hundreds of people came out for the step up for Down syndrome walk and block party. Teams from all over Connecticut decorated tables, enjoyed music, face painting, bounce houses and kid zones. All the money raised for DS Act. Fox 61 caught up with the largest fundraising team, Maddie's mascot, who raised over $11,000 this year with a team of more than 114 people. Amazing, honestly. Yeah. You know, like without our employers and stuff like that, we would have never gotten here. BJ's, American Distilling, like they helped us out so much along the way. It, it's honestly so amazing. Like every time, every time we do something that has to do with the association or just go somewhere, meet people, it's like it just gets bigger and bigger each time. Fox 61 is a proud sponsor with the Making an Impact grant. Our Keith McGilvery and Rachel Piscatelli emceed the event.